The 2025 season is set to be incredible. Not only are the cars getting closer out on track, but the driver transfers confirmed are very intriguing. There are still four more slots left to fill. So who will end up taking those seats? Mercedes could gamble on a rookie, Sauber may settle with their fourth choice, and RB is still in limbo. There's so much chaos that is yet to play out. Just to catch you up to speed, we've already seen a massive five driver transfers confirmed for the 2025 season. The one that got this chaos started was Hamilton confirming that he would be heading to Ferrari. Then came the announcement of Nico Hülkenberg moving to Sauber. Ferrari rookie Oli Behrman took his seat at Haas, with Esteban Ocon leaving Alpine to take the seat alongside Behrman. And coming full circle, we recently had the confirmation of Carlos Sainz joining Williams for next year. That leaves us with a grid that looks like this for the 2025 season. And as you can see, we're still missing confirmation around four seasons. Seats. Mercedes, Alpine, RB and Stake Sauber still don't have a driver locked into a seat for next season. So I thought we'd take a look at the options for those four seats and figure out who's the most likely driver to fill each of those gaps. Let's start with the biggest seat that's still available at Mercedes, and it has to be said, an incredibly resurgent Mercedes. So you look at the first half of this season for George Russell and Lewis Hamilton, and okay, pre-Canada, it wasn't too great, but they were always in the points. Fifth places, sixth places, seventh places, outside of a disaster weekend in Australia. But post-Canada, it's completely changed. You look at their results since then, there's always been a Mercedes on the podium in every single one of the last six races. They've even managed to win three of the last four, something that we did not expect from Mercedes this season. Then looking at the progress that each team has made throughout the first half of the year in comparison to Red Bull, Mercedes have closed the gap to Formula One's top team, which could lead to another crazy twist in the driver market. Toto Wolff's pursuit of Max Verstappen hasn't disappeared. Red Bull's problems behind the scenes have already led to two huge departures, whilst Verstappen's frustrations at the team's lack of concern about the problems that they've had this season means there might be a tiny chance that the current world championship leader could swap to Mercedes. I feel like it's unlikely to happen in 2025, but they probably want to leave that option available to them in 2026. So realistically, I think we're likely to see George Russell and Andrea Kimi Antonelli line up for Mercedes next year. The 17-year-old turns 18 just after the Dutch Grand Prix weekend, so is fully eligible for a proper super license, even though they changed the rules a little bit earlier on this season. So we could see him in some free practice sessions for the team later in the year, which would be a great test for him and is one of the reasons that convinced Haas to go for Behrman. So it could be a similar thing for Antonelli. Plus, Antonelli looks to have done enough throughout his comprehensive testing schedule, putting in some impressive performances against some tough opponents whilst testing old Mercedes F1 machinery as well as improving his Formula 2 form to put himself in a position where I feel like he's pretty much guaranteed to be in that Mercedes car next year. In fact, there are a few rumours going around that he could be announced at his home Grand Prix in Monza, but those are just rumours. After entering the conversation late and eventually missing out on Carlos Sainz, Alpine looked to be back to plan A and will likely promote their own junior driver Jack Doohan. It felt like he was already the obvious choice once the departure of Esteban Ocon was confirmed. It just feels like the right time for Doohan to finally get his chance with the team. Of course, they still have Pierre Gasly as their main driver for next year, so they can rely on him to get the points if they're on offer and use next year to see if Doohan is actually good enough for 2026, as it's likely the whole team will focus on getting everything sorted for 2026 anyway, because there's a lot to sort out behind the scenes under Oliver Oaks, and if they want to get fully prepared for the new regulations, they've still got a long way to go. With Sainz going to Williams and Ocon going to Haas, Sauber find themselves in the very awkward situation of trying to find a backup to their backup. And their options are incredibly limited because the team doesn't really have many selling points outside the fact that Audi probably pay quite well. They're the slowest team on the grid by a long, long way, and they have massive mechanical issues to overcome, and Audi are already making huge changes to their Formula 1 team, despite not being a Formula 1 team yet. Andreas Seider was the man putting together his driver lineup at first by getting in Nico Hülkenberg and having discussions with other drivers, but now he's been moved to one side. Something that the driver they have already confirmed doesn't really like because one of the biggest reasons that he was convinced to move was to reconnect with Andreas Seidel. But I'm sure Nico will get over it and won't be exiting that seat or anything crazy, leaving incoming team boss Matteo Benotto to try and find a partner for Nico Hülkenberg. There were big links to Liam Lawson earlier on in the year, but again, that was when Seidel was the main man and those rumours have died down quite a lot with Benotto seemingly after someone with a bit more experience, which means I think after all the links and all the rumors to almost all of the other drivers on the grid, 
they'll end up re-signing one of the drivers they already have. If Valtteri Bottas was German, he would have likely been signed up to this Audi project a while ago. He's the most accomplished driver still available on the grid with 10 race wins to his name, is still operating at a pretty high level considering the car that he's been given, and already has experience inside of the team, meaning that he can get right down to the business of trying to get Audi off to a good start in Formula 1. So. I think he takes that seat, which leaves us with the final seat to fill being alongside Yuki Tsunoda at RB. And the reason I've left this until last is because amongst the Red Bull seats is still a potential curveball. Red Bull at the start of the summer break once again confirmed that they're sticking with Sergio Perez for now. And looking at the first six Grand Prix, you can't really blame Red Bull for wanting to keep hold of Sergio. He hadn't finished below fifth place and he picked up four podiums in the first six Grand Prix. It felt like it was going really well. For the eight Grand Prix since Miami, at best have been below par, and at worst, have probably been the worst driving that we've seen from Sergio Perez in a Red Bull. If you think about the fact that he's battling with those top four teams, eighth place is pretty much the lowest that he can justify finishing. And he's finishing eighth place more often than not. Austria, there was obviously the DNF from Lando Norris, which gained him a place, and in Belgium, the disqualification from George Russell. So he's finishing eighth in four of those Grand Prix. And then the outliers, the two DNFs in Monaco and Canada. Again, he shouldn't have qualified that low down in Monaco. Okay, it wasn't his fault he got taken out by Kevin Magnussen, but the Canada incident is completely his fault and he loses the car and backs it into the barriers. And then also the 17th place in Great Britain, I think Sergio Perez has to take blame for that. And there's still potential for change after the next four races at Zandvoort, Monza, Baku and Singapore, which historically are some of Sergio Perez's better tracks. Assuming he does well throughout that stint and puts Red Bull's worries about McLaren catching them in the constructor standings to rest, then the situation at RB is also affected. Especially if your name is Daniel Ricciardo. After a slow start to the season where he was comfortably beaten by Yuki Tsunoda outside of that sprint race in Miami, it felt like Daniel Ricciardo was under a lot of pressure. But actually, since Canada and those Villeneuve comments, he has finished above Tsunoda in four of the last six. And even those two Grand Prix where he finished below Yuki Tsunoda, been pretty close between the two RB drivers. However, Helmut Marko has been making it clear that Red Bull wants its second F1 team to be more like a junior team again. I think given that Red Bull have Isaac Hadjar in the position where he may win F2 and therefore won't be eligible to race in F2 again, as well as Limblad in F3 who looks really promising, and of course Liam Lawson knocking on the door of Formula 1, there's just too much young talent to keep hold of Danny Rick, and I think Liam Lawson will end up taking that spot at RB shuffling all the juniors up. So Lawson goes into RB, Hadjar becomes the Formula 1 reserve, and Limblad goes into Formula 2. So I think the most likely 2025 grid we'll see is this. Antonelli to Mercedes, Duin to Alpine, Bottas to stay at Sauber, and Lawson to take that RB seat. But it's Formula 1, and we don't call the driver transfer dealings the silly season for nothing. And if you want to know more about how each of the teams developed over the first half of the season, I made this video here, where I compare all of the other nine Formula 1 teams to the current Formula 1 champions Red Bull to see who's catching the Austrian team and who has more to do in the second half of the season. So click that link and I'll see you over there.